Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to make a butternut squash risotto with sage and goat's cheese. This is great for the fall season as it's a nice comfort food and it's so warm and creamy. Let's begin. So first we're going to cut up our butternut squash. I slice the top and bottom so that it's easier to cut on a flat surface. And you're just going to want to peel your butternut squash. I like eating butternut squash during the winter time as it's great for roasting, um, it's great to even top on salads. It just has this nice kind of pumpkin-y flavor, but it's kind of creamy at the same time, so it's quite nice. Now we're just gonna cut it lengthwise, and we're just gonna have them chopped up in little cubes. Now we're gonna take the seeds out. Be sure to save the seeds because they make a great snack after when you roast them. So I'm just scooping it out with a spoon and there they are. Such a pretty color. Anyway, now we're just gonna measure in about a cup of our chopped butternut squash and the rest will be for another recipe. <laughs> so here we have about a cup and a half of rice. Usually you'd use arborio rice for a risotto, but here I'm just using some short grain. And we have about a cup of mushrooms. These are pre-sliced cremini mushrooms that I just got at the store. I think any mushroom could really work, white button or whatnot. And here we have a bunch of fresh sage leaves. About two tablespoons of goat cheese. I know it's an acquired taste and not everybody likes it, but it tastes so good with the butternut squash. And here we have some garlic, which we will mince later. And a yellow onion, which we will also chop later on. Here we have our one cup of butternut squash. And we have two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. And here's a teaspoon of dried thyme. And if you're using fresh, you can use about two sprigs or so. And here we have our extra virgin olive oil. Now we had some Swiss chard growing from the garden, so I just picked some out and you can use either kale or spinach instead or just omit it completely. Now we're just going to heat up our pot on high and once it's hot we're going to add in our olive oil. On the side over there we have 3 cups of chicken broth just ready for our risotto for later. And once the oil is hot, we're going to fry in a few sage leaves. This will not only be our garnish at the end, but it also infuses our oil with a nice earthy sage flavor. And after they're fried, we're just going to set them aside on a piece of paper towel. You can see the oil's really hot as it's smoking, so you might want to turn the heat down a bit. I actually put it on the other burner because it's so hot and I don't want to burn myself. So at this point you want to add in your minced garlic. You just kind of want to cook your garlic till it's a nice golden color. And once it's golden, you want to add in your chopped onions.
Just let that saute a bit. And now we're ready to add our dried thyme. And here's some chopped fresh sage. And here we have our butternut squash. You want to make sure that it's covered nicely with all your oils and herbs and flavor. Oh, it smells so good. It's just fall all in a pot. <laughs> now it's time to add in our mushrooms. <laughs> I got into this habit of tossing my pot like that because I was watching this K-drama called Pasta where they're so particular about tossing the pan in a certain way that I started doing it too. Anyway, I was getting impatient with the cooking process of my butternut squash as it takes a long time. So I added in some chicken broth to kind of deglaze the pan and to also give it a steaming effect to speed up the cooking process of my butternut squash. And once it's done and it's tender, you want to add in your rice. And you're just going to want to mix the rice in so that it's all nicely coated with all the flavors of the oils, the broth, the butternut squash. And you also want the rice to get a little toasted also before you add in any more liquids to start the cooking process of our risotto. Once it's toasted, now we can start adding our chicken broth ladle at a time. And be sure to just start mixing once you add in a couple ladles or so. Risotto is kind of a slower cooking process. It's quite tedious since it's known to be um, lots of steps repeated of just pouring in the broth and stirring, pouring in the broth and stirring, but honestly, it's so worth it in the end when it just, you taste that creamy rice dish, oh, so good. And also, with this step, you're able to release all the starches of the rice instead of needing to add any heavy cream or butter, you just get the starchiness of your rice, which makes it rather thick and also kind of creamy too. So you just want to cook your rice till it's al dente and make sure it's kind of soupy too because um, later on it will thicken up. So just keep stirring, just keep stirring. <laughs> I love finding Nemo. And once you're all done then take it off the heat now you see it's a nice consistency and you're just gonna want to add in your Swiss chard yes it's straight raw but it will cook from the heat of the risotto so don't worry you can also like I said earlier add in spinach instead or kale or any grief green leafy um, thing but yeah or omit it completely it's up to you now we're gonna add in some of our goat's cheese if you don't like goat's cheese too much you can add less it's really up to you I just like the nice taste of the goat's cheese with the butternut squash and the sage it just tastes so put together <laughs> and you're just gonna want to mix it up and let it melt inside to give it kind of like a creaminess and at this point, you can add in, little by little, your parmesan. I decided to do it little by little so that I can make sure that the parmesan is well incorporated in my risotto. Doesn't that look so good? 
I'm not even gonna lie, I'm like salivating right now. Risotto <laughs> mm. is just one of those comfort food dishes that, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. Anyways, you're gonna wanna now just taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning of salt and pepper. And you're ready to serve. Risotto is such a great dish for coming home to after a cold afternoon of raking the lawn with all those leaves. Or for my American viewers, with Thanksgiving around the corner, I think this would make a great side dish to change things up a bit, you know? And again, here we have our fried sage leaf, which is just a pretty garnish. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Here I have a link to my pumpkin spice cake roll, and in the comment section below, let me know what your favorite comfort food is. Thanks for watching.